Good evening, everyone. What's up? Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Beams. We're a live stream music series, and we've been doing this since April of 2020 to try and keep Arizona artists top of mind for our audiences and to make sure that we, ASU Care, stays connected with you, our audience, and the artists. We've loved getting together with so many awesome musicians and being able to chat with them and hear what they've been doing during the pandemic. And we had to have Sydney Sprague back because she had to play on Zoom last time. An awesome, awesome show with her guest Kitty on the backup. And we wanted to have her back in our beautiful historic venue where we are broadcasting from tonight. So we will get started in just one moment. We wanna tell you about our other live stream this month. Both of our programs are now monthly. So our storytelling series gather is always the final Wednesday of the month. Those shows start at 6.30 p.m. and you can watch just as you're watching now on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Live. And you can hear three storytellers from Arizona circle up and tell a story around the theme. That theme this month is What Almost Was. And we have Diana Dinshaw from the Storytelling Institute at South Mountain Community College as the guest host. And she'll be joined by Mario Avent and Nick Newberry. They're three really awesome tellers. We hope you will tune in for that and then drop your questions for them for our really fun Q&A that happens after they finish telling stories. We are now going to hand it over to one of our favorite Arizona artists. Sydney just signed with Rude Records, is releasing these beautiful, beautiful, wonderful videos for all these cool songs on the record and you're going to hear some of them tonight a very special acoustic set so please share the link to watch if you know someone that needs some awesome indie rock in their life tonight and please enjoy the next hour with sydney hello my name is sydney thanks so much for having me in this beautiful place i'm going to sing some of the uh, I guess all of my own songs. So uh, this is a song called Steve. You had my heart. You ate it like a peach in summer. Spit it out and said, I'm not as sweet as another. Oh, you say you want it so bad, so you don't till you're running right back to her. Can I get what I want? Only once would it ever be enough? Kill it all just because you might all the been us in my. Think about the girl in Chicago. I found my place sitting in the back, sitting in the back of your mind. Oh no. Oh, you say I miss you so much. Do you know? Do you really know the feeling when he kisses you across?
Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate that you think I'm awesome. <laughs> it's very nice to be streaming um, in a place with nice acoustics. This is a very beautiful room. Um, it's nice to be out of my sweatpants for once. <laughs> so yeah, I'm here at the, uh, the ASU CARE Cultural Center. It's a very beautiful place. Hopefully they'll be uh, doing some in-person shows soon, but for now, I get it all to myself. So lucky me. Um, let's see, I'm gonna play a song called Rongo. <laughs> Everything is fate or a perfect day And I think that everything is fake Even time and space, what do I know? My mind is all blank, everything erased Ever since the day I saw your face And I lost my brain, where did it go? coming to Beaumont, Texas. Well, probably very soon. Um, I don't know that I'll specifically, well, you know that I'll make a stop in Beaumont to say hi at least, but um, I don't know that I have a show in Beaumont, but I am coming through Texas. I can't say when or why, but um, I will tell you very soon. I'm very excited about it. Older song. This is a uh, this is a song from an EP that's not out on the internet anymore, um, except for on my Bandcamp subscription service. Um, it's called FOMO, which you might know as the fear of missing out, which is something that I experience often. <laughs> In the middle of the road, you 
Thank you guys for hanging. I'm so happy to see some friends here. All right, this next song is uh, another one off of the record. It's, uh, if you don't know, I put out my first full length record in February of this year. Um, it's called Maybe I'll See You at the End of the World. And um, this is a song off of it that I wrote kind of on accident, I started, I had this habit that I was trying to break and I would like kind of berate myself. I had this like recurring thought that was just like, you have to stop doing this, like, you have to stop. It was like, at a certain point I would like say it out loud to myself, it's like, please stop doing this thing. Um, and so I decided to turn it into a song as a way to like really internalize it. If I had to play it all the time, maybe it would like sink in. Um, and it took a really long time, but it did eventually sink in. So it works if you're trying to quit, um, quit doing anything. Just uh, harass yourself for a long time. <laughs> proven, proven method. Or just listen to this song a lot of times. You have to stop, you know you do this every time the lights go off. You know you're gonna change your mind, you know you do this every time. Digging your heels deep into the pavement, you ain't falling for nothing time. 
Oh, thanks, guys. Unfortunately, um, no eggs tonight. Um, but that's a great, this is a great opportunity for me to plug my Twitch channel. Um, I stream on Twitch uh, Mondays and Fridays, and it's a really good time. Um, I just play whatever, whatever everybody wants to hear. I take requests. Um, and we have these things called egg points. Don't ask me how that started, because um, it's really stupid. But um, the bottom line is that it's very fun. And as you watch, you earn points. And uh, you can spend them on fun stuff. Uh, I, I do some little bits on my show. So come, come hang out with us. I'll be on, uh, I'll be on tomorrow night. <laughs> is also kind of a bummer, so I'll, I'll try to play something fun after this, but this one is called Quitter. If I give up, would you call me a quitter? Never been good, but I cheat like a winner, don't I, babe? But you call me a sinner Laughing out loud And I still sound bitter Isn't that crazy? Did I pass you by Somewhere on Greenway last night? Did you see me screaming out the window About to lose my mind? Would it be alright If we gave it another try? Pieces of you in the carpet in my living room. Buttons that you tore out when I told you there's no more. If I loved you again, could you love me better? Wrap me up like a favorite sweater one more time. Did I pass you? to play Wonderwall tonight. Not tonight. Um, it's all about me today, actually. Um, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play all originals today. So if uh, if there's any uh, older originals, I'm gonna play probably the whole record because it's it's only about 28 minutes long. So you'll hear the whole thing. But um, feel free to request any of my songs if you know them. Um, <laughs> Some of you guys, I know some of you guys know this one. Um, it's a newer song called Meow Meow Meow. Meow 
meow, meow, meow. Who are you gonna talk to now? Who are you gonna call when you come through town? When it's over completely, act so proud. Every time shut me out, said he couldn't call cause he went downtown. Never act like you need me. I say you do cause if you didn't, every second that we spent would be a lie. I, I know it's true and I don't want to waste your fucking time. You'll never kiss me again And you're gonna miss me When I'm gone Thinking about all the things you did wrong Think of every girl you don't lay hands on But you won't move on Cause see my face when you hear that song About everything it could have been known It won't come true I see could not start laughing After everything that's happened on I so good cause now I think I'd rather be alone and you'll never kiss me again and you're gonna miss me and you'll never kiss me again Which artist and author inspires me? Um, I'm inspired by a lot of different music. Um, kind of all over the place, honestly. I started out as a kid listening to a lot of like pop music. My first uh, CD I ever bought was Britney Spears. So I really love like a good hook. Um, but I also, I got into like a lot of indie, alternative and emo uh, as I got older. So I think I got more into like more uh, more sad, not sad lyrics, but more like thoughtful lyrics. And um, bands like Death Cab for Cutie, that's a big one for me. They really inspired my album. Um, and then as far as authors, I, the first thing that came to mind was I used to read, not used to, I haven't, I guess I haven't read a book in a minute. I should read more books. But I used to read a lot of Chuck Palahniuk. I really like, I like that style. Uh, again, I guess like darker, darker themes overall inspire me. I don't know what that says about me, but there you go. Um, let's see, let's do, I'll play Easier to Lie. <laughs> smile just to say face and it gets hard to keep my heart in the right place and on my heels I can feel the fade in the better days it just gets hard to keep my heart in the right place whoa Swell overwhelmed in a new life. 
And I remember when you were on my side And now I'm told I can see it all from a different night I start to crawl and break down the walls to an open mind So yeah, that's another, that was an older song. Um, again, it's not out on streaming, but if you are on Bandcamp, you can subscribe there and uh, get some of the older tunes, including that one. Um, how did the pandemic affect my creative energy? Um, I feel like I was really lucky um, in just like having, or maybe not lucky, but I went from working um, every day for five or six years to doing nothing. And it gave me some time that I've never had before to really like invest in writing and specific, specifically in like recording my own music um, at home, which is something that I've never really gotten to do before. Um, it was really cool. I wrote a lot of songs. I was in a workshop for a month. Uh, I think it was back in March or April of 2020 um, that was like really challenging but really fun for me. I wrote, you know, with other people in Zoom sessions. I I wrote off of prompts, which is was a new thing for me. Um, and I wrote some of my favorite songs that way. So I think it was really, you know, it was, a, it was a really hard time, but it inspired me to do some things that I never would have done otherwise. Um, and I also made a lot of music videos, which was another uh, side of my creative brain that I've never gotten to uh, use too much, and that was really fun. Um, scary, but fun. I worked with a couple of good friends of mine, Michael and Taylor, on most of those videos, and they they managed to uh, put me in at least one life-threatening situation for <laughs> every video that we did. Um, the Steve video, I got a concussion from throwing a chair at a wall. Um, the quitter video, they were, I was in the middle and they were shooting BB guns on either side of me. So, you know, got a lot of adrenaline out of that. And the videos aren't too bad. You can see those on my YouTube. Um, let's see. A lot of people asking for A-bomb. So we're gonna do A-bomb. This is another older one that is uh, it's on the band camp. Um, and I wrote it about 
someone who used to be president. I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> Get physical, crowd all the halls of our municipals to try to underline our guiding principles and tell them that we do mind. If we're objectified, we demand a no exactly what you'll grab us by. Just as soon as we can find a bigger axe to grind this tale, it's mother. Time is Gone. This is one of my favorite songs off of the record. Um, it's about just one of those times of your life where you wish that time would go by faster. Um, as I get older, I, I, I want it to go slower now, but...
out of Kels here. Kels is a great friend, hello. All right, I saw Careless Thing on the list, so I'm gonna try that. It's been a long time since I played this song, so forgive me. Thanks for your claps. Um, how did the Rude Records deal come about? Um, so it was very, very lucky. Um, I, there's a friend of mine's band in town called Sundressed, and I had, they had asked me to sing backup vocals on one of their songs. This was like late 2019. Um, and so I did that, and uh, through that I met their producer, which is a guy named Mike Pepe, who's probably the nicest person on planet Earth. Um, he's an an actual angel person. Um, so I had done that, and then I went to make my record. Um, Mike ended up mixing it, because I wanted to work with him again. So. We had sent it off to him, he mixed it, and then I had put out the first song, which is I Refuse to Die, last June. And Mike had a good relationship with Rude Records. They had just signed Sundressed, so they had already kind of, they'd heard my voice, they knew my name, um, and then they heard the record and they really loved it. And so that was kind of that. They're, they're really amazing, they're over, over in Italy, so it's been really cool getting to know them and, um, seeing more of like a, a global perspective of the music industry is really interesting. Um, but yeah, they're, they're amazing. And yeah, obviously Sam Rawson is just ridiculous. Um, I was lucky enough to meet him through Danielle Dirac, who has played the Beams session before. Um, she's also my best friend. We love her very much. Um, so yeah, I, had, I was a fan before we were friends and I had heard her record and I was like, I have to know who did this. I need you to uh, introduce me. So she did. And yeah, that's how it all happened. All right, this is a song called Careless Thing. Let's see if I remember how to play it.
Yay. What was the most expensive? The cost of making the video or the emergency room visit after the video? Um, they were about equal. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. I learned a lot about concussions through that experience. Um, that was my first one. And I went into the emergency room and, and they were like, they told me that the only way that they could tell if I actually had a concussion was to give me a spinal tap. Um, and that I could either, I could either have that or I could go home and just like hope for the best. So I opted for the, the going home and hoping for the best. So. It all worked out, it's fine. Um, and I learned that I never wanna do that again. So my, my next round of music videos will probably be in like a bubble. <laughs> all right. The song's called The Winter, another old one. for listening to all these songs. I really appreciate it. Um, how does it feel to play older songs and live the emotions of them again? Um, 
It is kind of weird. It's like, um, it's different for every song, obviously. They all like carry different emotions. Um, some of them still feel very, um, really true and really like they can like find new meaning in even the life changes and things change. Like there's some songs that still, still like mean a lot to me. Um, and I can like kind of like translate them into how I think about things now. Like that last song, The Winter, for example, um, I don't really agree with that song anymore, but it's, it's cool to be able to look back. It's like reading your old diary and being like, wow, um, you did not know what you're talking about sometimes. Sometimes things are just over, um, but it is cool. I like, I like to sing the old ones. But this is a new one. Um, and speaking of Danielle Dirac, it's, uh, she's featured on this song. Um, and it's on Spotify and all the things, so you can go listen. Um, but it's called Object Permanence. I get lonely, but I, I get used to it. I, I get bored and it starts on fires outside. I'm forgetful and it's not a problem, but if you are gone too long, I will forget it. This is real. I'm not positive. I can't see it. Is it obvious? Is object permanence real? Guys, thank you for wearing my shirts. I appreciate it. I promise there's new ones coming soon. <laughs> I, I will admit that I also wear the uh, I also wear the uncomfortable shirt around the house. So I think it's okay to wear your own merch if it doesn't have your name on it. I think that's allowed. <laughs> All right, I got a couple more songs. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, let's see. I'm going to do, I'm actually going to play Uncomfortable, since we're talking about it, and because I have a lot of those shirts left, so if, if anybody wants a really cool shirt that just has Uncomfortable on it, I got you. I've been walking the fine line 
You guys are killing me with these <laughs> merch ideas. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, thank you so much to ASU Care for having me. I really hope I can, uh, I can come back here sometime soon and see a show, because um, it's really a beautiful place. I think it might be a little haunted, but in a good way. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend you come out here once Everything's back to normal. Um, thank you guys so much. This is uh, my last one, and it's called End of the World. great night everybody maybe yeah you know maybe i'll see you at the end of the world baby <laughs> it's 
Sydney Sprague, thank you so much. That was beautiful. And one of our favorite things about the Beam series has been seeing the artists, fans, friends, and family in the chat for the show. This was so much fun. Everyone was so funny. And it's no surprise that Sydney just has smart, funny fans and family and friends. We love getting to know all of you and getting to know artists like Sydney better through these streams. So while there's no substitute for the in-person performances that are returning in the fall, this is pretty awesome sometimes. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you to Sydney. Wonderful show. And she was on this series before, performed remotely via Zoom, and it was a really cool show with a cat guest. So if you want to go look back in our archives on YouTube, you can catch that show too. We have another stream coming up at the end of the month. Maybe we'll see you at the end of the month. Wednesday, June 30th, 6.30 p.m., we have our monthly storytelling series gather kicking off. That is what almost was themed this month. So three Arizona storytellers get together, tell stories in line with that theme, and then afterwards we have a fun conversation Q&A with them. So please do tune in. That is a 6.30 p.m. show you watch just like you're doing now on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook Live. So we hope we will see you there. And as we mentioned at the top of the hour, we have been doing these streams since April of 2020. These are paid gigs for artists, and we and our whole staff feel so fortunate that we were able to keep working and do something to keep infusing a little support into the creative community by having artists perform, giving them a little cash. We had a super modest budget, and we always appreciated when artists could work with us, and it just gave us wonderful things to do during an otherwise pretty sad time. So if you enjoyed this show, please think about supporting ASU Care. We're gonna keep doing these monthly, we're gonna keep doing the storytelling series monthly, and we need to bounce back big in the fall. So if you are able to contribute, we do recommend you go to asukerr.com, click the gold give now button, and you can give any amount there. There is really no amount that's too small. We are a resourceful bunch and we make it count. So thanks again for tuning in tonight. We will be back with another Beams show on the second Thursday of July, and we hope we'll see you then. Have a great night. <laughs>